Hello and welcome to Moons of Ascension. I'm your host, Jen Berryhill, and I'm here with two very, very dear friends and special guests that I'm really excited to share more of their story with you. I'm joined today with Richard and Lori Legan, and they have an amazing we're not even going to call it a near-death experience because I think you coined it as a death experience. And some very interesting things happened to you, Richard. And I'm just curious about that story and what happened and some of the information that came through. Because when I first learned of your story and this experience, you you mentioned that if if what you share can help one person, then mm. it makes a difference for us. And as we know, we're all in this ascension process together. And when, this channel really is dedicated to all things ascension. And so when I got to have a, a, a quick chat with you guys, um, I don't know, what was that, gosh, a month ago or so, and you're sharing with, your, sharing with me your experience, you know, it seemed really important that what you had to share was broadcasted out into a bigger audience because we we all need tips and tools and insights and perspectives that are going to help us with our growth and our healing and how we can navigate through the energies that are coming in right now as, um, you know, I, I experience it as what I call the shift. And so where we're going as humanity and you know, whatever insight is available to us to help us understand what's involved and maybe what's available for help, um, maybe outside guidance and things like that. So you hold a lot of wisdom and you too, Laura, because you were all, you were part of this experience with Richard when he had his death experience and your take on what was going on is also incredibly fascinating and so I'm going to give you both a chance to share what was happening during that time in October of 2022, when Richard ended up having a GI bleed and had to go to the ER. But first, before we dive in, there's something else that I feel is fun to share because we're all connected as what we call star family. So we know each other through Chief Golden Light Eagle and the Star Knowledge Conferences and you two happened to be at the very first conference in 1996. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And so tell me, tell us what happened when you first met Chief Golden Light Eagle. It was a spontaneous recognition that he and I had personally. And beyond that, it was a very expansive experience that felt intuitively guided that all of these beings got brought together at a time when it wasn't really common to have everyone coming together in that particular way that we did at that point. So it, it was very much, you know, otherworldly, universally, cosmically guided for this event that took place that has had this ripple effect all the way up till today where even though chief is no longer in his body there's a huge community of people who are carrying out this um as you say moving into the ascension process together even if we're not together physically mm -hmm. yeah and so when you had that spontaneous recognition was it like a past life memory didn't you recognize each other as being family Absolutely. <clears throat> when um, Chief was approaching me, and at that time he wasn't a chief, he was known as Standing Elk, and he was approaching me. We were actually at a bridge on a physical bridge, and he was walking towards me. I was walking towards him, and as we came close to each other, we recognized each other, and we both at the same time had a spontaneous past life recognition. And we remembered um, myself as his mother. That's why he always calls us mom and dad. Myself as his mother, um, as he was going out to um, hunt, and 
in that recognition, we both embraced and wept and spoke about it once we could move into a place of less emotion at that point. But at that point, we were simply recognizing each other and connecting on this very deep soul level. And so I consider it an honor and a blessing that he and I were able to both recognize that connection that we held. And there's a very big backstory to that that I think would be too lengthy to communicate. Maybe we could do another um, time to share that because it's it's a little lengthy. But yes, it, it was amazing. And um, we've we've talked about it together and processed it down the road throughout the years together. So it was very beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. And, you know, that was always so magical. Anytime we would have the conferences, I was his conference coordinator for about eight years. And, you know, anytime we got together to do that work as a collective, you know, so we called it the star family collective, you know, the, yes. the folks that, you know, see things a little bit differently and have all these connections to star nations and the teachings that come through with what Chief was sharing, which were this um, universal and spiritual laws of creation. You know, that was his mission to do these gatherings and teach about these things. And then the folks that would come, you know, we, we would we would have these, like you said, like spontaneous recognitions, like we really know each other. And we remember times that we were together, or maybe there's just something super familiar with somebody that you meet. And then as you begin to, to talk together, you know, things unlock, and then we have these remembrances. And those were always such treasured times for me, because we all hold this piece of the puzzle. And sometimes it takes being in the presence of somebody else that holds a code or a key that helps to unlock that remembrance again. And so that work just keeps unfolding and continuing. And, you know, we realize that we're all doing such big work on so many different levels. And, you know, it's just such a treat to know you too, because you're, you have such great, beautiful hearts and you're so generous with your light and your love. And so that's partly why I wanted to bring you on and, and share that little bit of that background for how you knew Chief. And I remember him you know, later after that, you know, at the conferences where I would see him and you, that he'd be like, oh, there's my mom. There's, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just so cute. <laughs> yes. Endearing. So yeah, uh, things are evolving. And, you know, since he's passed, I am picking up the torch again and kind of reinventing a little bit of how we would gather. And I'm creating a festival that's going to be held in August in Aztec, New Mexico, and it's called Sunfire Festival. So I don't know, maybe we'll see you guys there, which would be amazing. But I know you like to hang tight at home these days and Gosh, you're, you're still re kind of recovering a little bit, Richard. So let's just move in to where this story really started. And I'm just excited to, to ask you some questions about that journey and um, give you an opportunity to share with us the wisdom, the insight, the awareness, the perceptions, the perspectives, whatever you feel called to share that can help us all um, at this point really potent time. I'm just excited to hear whatever you have. So take us back to October of 2022 and let us know what happened. Well, I can tell you my part. And of course, Laura can, can fill in a lot more than I can. Because all, all I remember is when um, I was just really feeling very, very, very strange. And I wanted to go from our living room to the bedroom. And I asked Laura to uh, just come over and help me and stand in front of me. Let me put my hands on your shoulders. And I took th we took three steps and I just went down and I took her down with me. And after that, I crawled uh, to my bedroom and got into on top of the bed. And then all I remember is the paramedics coming in. And then um, jerk, I remember my head jerking to the side as they 
pulled me over onto a board and pulled the board over onto the gurney. And then after that, as far as my conscience being remembers, was waking up in my uh, hospital room. And I guess that might have been three days. But a lot happened in between then. Laura can talk to the the part that she saw, and I should let her talk to that, is when I'm, well, I'll just let her talk real quick, because just imagine that she's following bumper to bumper the ambulance. Okay, dear. Mm -hmm. um, I will share from my perspective what was happening in the 3D world. <clears throat> And I can share also what was happening in the other, uh, the other realms um, from what I could see. But my husband and I, we've been together for 50 years. We met in college, so I have to say that first. So we're very connected. Um, when he became unable to physically do what he normally would do, which happened in a very kind of short time frame, and the decline was continuing. I uh, took it upon myself to, at the point that he's speaking about where he could no longer even walk on his own, I took it upon myself to go ahead and call 911. And it was probably about two in the morning. And they came and put him on the gurney. Um, as they did that, and they were taking him out of the house, which was an experience I'd never had before um, or since, I knew that my husband was actively dying. From my years of working in hospice, I can look and see that there was a, this was a problem. He was actively dying. And I needed to be fully present with him. So I followed, even though the ambulance, uh, the paramedics told me, don't come for half an hour. It's going to take half an hour to check him in. And I um, went ahead and followed that ambulance at that moment to the hospital. And they got him there so fast because the hospital was around the corner. Had... Uh, we were fortunate that the hospital was that close. Once he went into the ER, I was also guided by the medical staff to come into the room with him, which um, I had never experienced before. I had never seen that happen, even though I, my career is in, in the medical field. Um, I had never seen that happen. And I knew that God's hand was in it at that moment that they were telling me, come on. So I'm watching. And within a few minutes, um, first of all, when I got there, my husband was really uh, almost out of his body completely. And when I saw them start to work on him and give transfusions and so forth, um, I saw him flatline. The, the medical uh, machinery all showed flatlining, but I also knew by looking at him that he was gone. And at that moment, and by the way, they had, the medical staff had invited me to be next to him, to talk to him, to do whatever I felt was appropriate or that I wanted to do. That's how critical it was. And I did all those things, but something told me to back away, back away from his physical body, which I did. And I'm watching this dance of the medical staff that looks like many people in harmony dancing as one. I'm using the word dance very loosely. They were all synchronizing in their working on him and trying to keep him alive and do things to support him on all levels. 
Was it so like, inside back? Yeah, was it like a, kind of like a surreal moment where time sort of stopped and changed? Because I think you even described it as everyone doing like Tai Chi, like everybody was moving in this flow and it was, you know, was it just like a different 3D reality altogether in that moment? Absolutely. And in my history of my life, I have often seen things move into a place of this same energy right before someone's going to leave their body. Hmm. Um, it happened with me with my grandmother. It happened with me with my mother. I've, I've had this experience in many different ways, but nothing like with my husband. Yeah. So, And then yeah. wasn't there a point in time where you, it was almost like you saw like light emanating from his heart? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to share that right now. Um, what, what happened was as I moved away, my heart felt like it was breaking open because I knew he wasn't there. It wasn't like he was above his body. It was like nobody's home. He's, he's already separated from his physical body is what it, uh, what it felt like to me. So as my heart's breaking open, because this is my life partner I've been with for 50 years, I, I'm drawn to look at my heart as I'm feeling this pain. Pain's probably not the right word, but this heart breaking open. And this shaft of light starts emanating out of my body and it's getting wider. And I see it, as I look at my husband, I see this shaft go straight to his heart. Now, mind you, he's gone. He's laying down. And this shaft reaches his heart. And at the exact same time, a new staff member decides to try to administer manual CPR instead of with machines. He's using his hands. And he's almost up on top of my husband. But as that white light hits my husband's heart, my husband takes a breath, which none of us expected because it felt like he had been gone for a very long time, which was probably only seconds, but it felt like there's no time and space, as we know. So for me in particular, it felt like a very long time. And by the way, as this shaft of light was hitting his heart, I saw on his left an image of his mother's face and on his right an image of his father's face. So I knew that they were there to welcome him and greet him and guide him. So it was a very um, otherworldly but very beautiful in the midst of this thought of losing him or having him not here with me, there was this amazing spiritual experience occurring. And when he took that breath, I was, I was amazed because I just was not expecting that I was going to see that. Mm -hmm. So it was very beautiful. And I knew that that light and his parents and creator had all together played a part in this of my husband coming back to life <laughs> that's that's what I can share oh wow that's so incredible and I can't even imagine I know you have a very deep and strong connection um having been together for so long and and that's like such a treat to to witness that we have a beautiful divine union that has sustained the test of time. And I can't imagine like how, how heartbreaking that probably felt in that moment to, to, to just face that loss, the idea of losing your beloved. And, um, but at the same time, how beautiful that you got to be there and hold space and, you know, like be there for what was going on and to, to kind of bring him back. And <laughs> so Richard, why don't you share with us now, um, kind of where you were at this moment in time. Sure. So at this moment in time, <clears throat> um, all I 
remember is that I was I wasn't in my body and I didn't know I wasn't in my body. My conscious self, um, I was just in this ocean of kind of sparkling energy, energy that sparkles. And it was endless. So I, I couldn't see the beginning. I couldn't see the end. I couldn't see the top. I couldn't see the bottom. I was, and I was like, how am I going to breathe in, in, in this energy? How, how, how am I going to breathe? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know I wasn't, I didn't have a body. I didn't see one, but I wasn't looking. And yet I was in like this presence, this omnipresence of, of something that was just so infinite, it was beyond words, something that was so divine, it was simply beyond words. And it was peaceful. Yes, in a very calm, powerful way, as if it was the most powerful force in all that is, because it was all that is. And there was just this infinite feeling of divine acceptance through love, And I was just in this energy that seemed to just go on and on and on. The next thing I remember is that <clears throat> I was, I at this time is just my spirit self. So my spirit self, I, I couldn't see, I was trying to see through my eyes, but it was like I was looking through a sheet. And I just couldn't focus. And there was a woman in front of me who kept yelling and screaming my name. And then I kept trying to focus. But at first, I didn't even care. And okay, so she's screaming, you know, yelling my name. And, and what's the point? And then all of a sudden, she rose up on her toes and just started screaming my name. And I thought, oh, gee, I better pay attention because... Uh, the only person who ever yelled like me like this was my mom. Mm -hmm. And that's a time that I realized when I came out of the hospital and Laura told me her story about the connection and the shaft and the golden light, that I realized that's when this lady, when she, this nurse, this doctor actually, when the doctor shifted from yelling and, and shifted to screaming and coming up on her toes, is when she saw life come back in. When she saw, I don't know, I took a breath, but she saw life come back in. And that's when I realized that my wife being anchored in the three dimensions gave me a path back into form. So I was out of form, and that was a path that I used, that was being used to bring me back into form. So I returned to form at that moment. It, it was later during those two weeks in the hospital that when this uh, voice that, or I should say the, this conscious awareness uh, is conversing with me for the next two weeks. And that voice I've heard at different times throughout my life. But this time that voice was there every day. And that's one of the things that the, the, in, in a free will planet and a free will dimension, it's, uh, my light bulb has to go off. It's uh, You can't give it to me. I have to have the aha because if I get the aha and my light bulb goes off, I own it. Then it, it's not somebody else's, it's mine. And it is this is this conscious awareness that I'm going to call God because it's easier and takes less words, was 
bringing me to places of conscious awareness inside myself, I remember at one point stating that because um, this because this God conscious was asked, well, and okay, and so what would you do through life? What would you do? And I say, I said, well, whenever I got to places where I just felt overwhelmed in life, and I had did not know, I knew when to bow, where to bow, and where to pray. And I would just ask God to please just hold me in the palm of your hand. And then the light bulb went off. Oh, that's where I am. That's where I was. And that's where I am because that energy never left. I just wasn't, I hadn't merged. My, my infinite self had not merged back into the infinite and that's why I was still in form, taking a breath. Mm. But that's how I came to that that awareness of, hmm, that's where I was. It sounds so peaceful. <laughs> and... Oh, it was amazing. It was peaceful. I tell people this is, I, I, I lost a lot of innocence that day in the sense that I had thoughts and beliefs that I strongly and deeply believed in because it resonated with me, my soul, myself. And that day, I didn't have any beliefs anymore. I, I had realities. And I got to bring that reality back into form and have that reality be my reality. Uh, Richard number two. Well, yeah, share with us maybe some of what, what those are. Like, what is that reality that you carry now that you didn't have before? Well, of course, the reality is that I don't have a question. Is there a God? Yeah, there's a God. There's a whatever, as many different religions have tried to describe, because it's just so such a limiting name, but as an infinite, divine, conscious, all that is energy, you bet. It's, it's as real as anything can possibly be. Um, my, when I look back through my life as I was guided to look at for those two weeks in the hospital, I, as I was guided to look back, I could see that my spiritual path began as a young child and everything had come up to that moment on October 10 when Richard number one was gone and Richard number two was born. And... Uh, it's pretty fascinating and pretty amazing to go from, from what resonates to being that which you thought was not you. One of the things that I that clearly happened and was brought to my awareness was that there is no separation. There's a perceived separation and, and understand we have to perceive separation to have a relationship. Just as you and I, if we perceive that we are the same, there's no relationship because we're the same. So if we perceive something a little, uh, a separation, we can have relationship. Well, I mean, that, that, that separation has made it very clear to me that there is no separation, that you know, that God and me, me and God are one, and, you know, and how many times I may have prayed, meditated, and chanted to, to invoke and to bring about a connectiveness. Well, that connection was all of a sudden 100%. And it was made very clear that I wasn't going to leave the hospital until I got 
all of these ahas that uh, were necessary for me to get and not necessarily in any particular order, but one of those ahas was that that God is our inf infinite source, creative energy. Is that breath came in to to this body, and then when the, that breath take, leaves this body, that the perceived me, the higher self me, that spirit me that sees through these eyes and dwells in this being and breathes, that God and me, are that breath is not mine alone. That breath is God, that breath is me. And that I am the inhale, I am the breath. Now that's both of us talking. I am the exhale. I am the breath. And there's no there's no connection lost when you inhale that first breath, and there's no connection lost when you exhale that last breath. It's all it's all connected. And that's one of the places where we're all connected is that breath. We can call it, we, we, we usually call it the breath of life, um, but the breath doesn't die. That energy just merges and that, that energy is, as we have, as we take breath in form in these dimensions. And it seems to me that it was clear that we are the channel to anchor that in this dimension. And that that energy resides in this in these three dimensions as we breathe in this these three dimensions. In my healing journey, uh, one of the teachings that I received was the importance and the power of the breath, and how how much you know transformation happens just by taking that breath, and that breath being conscious to bring us into our heart. And what you just described, like takes that to a whole new level and capacity <laughs> of understanding. And I really love that. I mean, I knew our breath was super important, but now it's, uh, you know, it's, it's everything. So. Yeah. And of course we studied breath a lot as well. Um, and um, breath is a great segue into love because while I was in this hospital and when from when from when I went out of out of form and came back in, all I've been in is what I call God's ocean, God's ocean of love, because it's just been this infinite ocean of just just love. And it just feels like the absolute most powerful force there is, period. And it has absolutely the most pranic energy, life force energy. It just, it is that. And all I could feel was this love. And all I was in was this ocean of love. And it was just, it was just amazing that I, I I was just there was no separation this ocean of just divine love and whenever I if I looked out my window and there was the trees and the leaves and the wind all I saw was love if I saw birds all I saw was love and everything and everywhere all I saw was love and I remember that voice asking okay wow so what do you feel and i said all i feel i feel i'm in love with love i mean i honestly don't know if i'm in love with love or love's in love with me but love and love we're in love and that's all i felt was just just love radiating everywhere and just in this ocean held in this ocean this this, the palms of God's hand, love. 
God, love. Everything was love. Then the conscious asked me, okay, well, how do you feel? So, hmm, well, well, what about everything else? And I said, I don't care about everything else. I'm in love with love. I just want to be, I just, it's just so subtle. And yet it just permeates. And yet there's such a connectiveness of resonance with my heart, my breath, that infinite source energy, there is no separation. It was all happening as if it was one because it was one. And the awareness is what only thing we can ever increase is our individual awareness. That, that's what could increase is our awareness of this. And that's where our path leads us. And that's where we make choices. And that's where we make, um, well, there's a word I'll think of it in a second. And then that, that conscious says, well, okay, but what about the rest of what's going on? And I just go, what about it? that consciousness wanted me to understand why I was acting and feeling that way towards everything else that was going on. And it said very quickly, it said, okay, so would you, have you ever, do you believe that God's hand is in all things? And then, and before I could even say anything, it said, the reason that you're not so concerned about everything is because my hand is in everything 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 and then i really got the picture that in with everything from the from the planets aligning and the astrologers talking about these cosmic events that are occurring and everything that's happening from this welling up of individuals saying i forgive this i forgive that and all I want to see and all I want to embrace is the is love. And holding on and anchoring and filtering in and being the groundedness as my wife was acting as a ground for me, as we're all acting as a ground for this energy that we don't even know how it's the most powerful there possibly is. And for what's happening and what's coming and what this whole event is. It was just so obvious to me that if it wasn't love, there's no life force. And when I look at other stuff on the planet and things that are happening, there's a, a swell of just this anchor, this just like rain, this love raining down and anchoring and bringing as we anchor it in our feet as we walk. And, uh, okay. I have, I have so people, many things firing up. Is here right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he just, he just popped in and he's like, yeah. ask, ask Richard about the little lights. <laughs> Well, as you possibly may know, my wife is clairaudient, clairsentient, and clairvoyant. And uh, so all of that is welcome and has been in our world for, and not a stranger for a long time. But uh, one night, before my wife came in, well, she never left, and she goes, you know, you're not going to believe how many people are praying for you. I thought, wow. Okay. And I think she said that because of what she saw. And we'll let her tell that story in, in just a second. But I never thought of that. And the next thing I know, I go, oh, call my friend. So I called my friend on the phone. And he goes, Richard, you're in a hospital. 
nobody knows you're in the hospital. How are they all praying for you? They don't even know anything happened to you. And then he said, everyone in your life who you have crossed a path with, anyone who you have ever touched with your heart, at the heart, that energy is coming from them. Those little lights that you're seeing are from them. And those little lights, it was, I was shown that I wasn't on the earth. I could see the earth down below. I could see that that ocean, uh, that God ocean was right behind me. And I wasn't in it right now because, again, I was in form. But I saw all these little streams little streams of little little red lights coming from different locations on planet earth and i and they were going under me and these little streams were all feeding this god ocean behind me they were adding to the collective ocean of all that is of infinite divine love and I saw these, so I, yeah, I saw a few little streams that kind of went around the horizon. And I go, oh my God, that's, that's my, that's our daughter and her family halfway around the world. Because they're thinking about that. Their, their, their thoughts are on me. Their, their heart connectiveness. And so there's consciousness and there's, and there's people, there's unconscious, but it just hit me how connected we all are in ways that we can't even imagine that have nothing to do with our conscious mind, personality, ego. Totally at the soul just totally, just spirit. How did I do, Chief? <laughs> well, you got me a little misty-eyed, so I think that was really good. Um, we're, we're so connected, you can't, we can't even imagine. We can't, it's too big. It's so infinite that our defini definition of infinite isn't even big enough. Right. Gosh, and you know, it's it's like, I have a whole new visual now because you know, we do a lot of ceremony and even like the sun dance, we are praying for the people that we love. And so now it's like, okay, so that's maybe what my prayers look like in the realm of the infinite that's going to help whoever I'm praying for and with. And so, you know, I just, I love having that extra visual because then it can be even more amplified with more conscious intent around how that prayer gets carried to where it needs to go for the help. And so and see that conscious intent. Since this is a free will planet, it really requires conscious intention. And anytime we apply conscious intention, that's just the connection. We're, we're now we're, it's like now we're connected and that, when we do in ceremony, all of that, it, this is where we give ourselves permission to connect with all that is and make that conscious intention. And that's the beauty of ceremony, but, you know, because it, it could be simple ceremony and it could be complex ceremony. But in ceremony, it, that's that's when we, we, we we bow to, we take our ego out of the way and we bow to our higher self. We bow to the higher self. We connect our higher self with the higher self. And boy, is it connected. I, I mean, I've seen it now. It's, it's not, for me, these, these, this isn't a philosophy. It's, it's my reality. I can only speak from my experience, but uh it's yeah you know it's, it's reminding me because 
<clears throat> you know, in the star knowledge teachings and working with the 13 moon calendar, star knowledge calendar, you know, everything begins and ends with the heart. So you're traveling around the wheel, but it circles around the energy of the Antakarana, the heart, the connection to all that is. And we used to do a lot of ceremony with chief and like there was no one like him because he was so loving and accepting. He wanted everyone to be in their heart. That was ceremony. That's how we can do ceremony was we, it, it's the ceremony of the heart. And so he was challenged a lot um, because of protocols and things like that. But he would always say no rules, no rules, free will. And I, I get why he did that. It's because, you know, if we're, we're constantly in our mind and we're going, am I doing this right? Or gosh, am, how am I supposed to do this? And, you know, like we're not in our heart. And so, yeah, we, we had some really clowny times and things could get wonky. Sometimes even people took hits and got hurt, but he still held fast to that idea or the commitment of no rules and it had to do with the heart and so i really appreciate what you just you just shared in all of that you know this importance of the breath the importance of the light that comes with the heart and the focus intention is the sincerity and that comes from the heart and so I just wanted to share that much. And I know you guys have so much more to share and I want to hear it all. <laughs> but Laura, you you mentioned that you you have something you want to share too. And if you feel like you're you're ready to do that, let's have you share. Sure. Well, as I'm hearing Richard speak and I'm hearing you speak and I'm remembering what this experience that we've all been through is about. When I initially started talking on this, uh, during this interview, I mentioned that my heart had broken open and I used the word pain. And I think I just had one small glimpse of a sense of loss as I saw my husband laying there knowing he was not there. His, he was no longer in form. But immediately the presence of spirit came through and that and that's why I corrected the word pain because it moved into the heart of complete unconditional love and all I could feel beyond my own sense of loss was the tremendous amount of love that I felt for Richard and I believe because I was in my heart and because I did experience that expansiveness and it was transmuted into love, that that's one of the reasons he came back. Now, the theme, not, not my credit at all, I'm giving it to creator, it's creator who does all things, but the state of consciousness that I was graced with at that moment allowed me to experience love in the midst of this loss. Now, where that same thread shows itself is I'm with Richard 24 seven at the hospital and every three hours they're coming in and take, taking blood. Every few hours they're giving him a new blood transfusion. He must have had 19 transfusions to try to keep him alive. He was on life support for a while. I mean, all of these things were happening very rapidly. And my entire universe was about being fully present with that experience. Nothing outside of that experience seemed to matter. But as a human, in a human form, if I'm watching what's happening to him physically and seeing all of the things that are going on, I'm recognizing from through these human eyes, I may think he's being practically tortured, what he's having to go through. 
And I share this with everyone to say that the 3D can be such an illusion because as, as he's in this loving ocean of the God ocean that he describes and he's feeling bliss and peace, my human self is thinking that he's being put through so much. But if you ask him, he'll say, I didn't experience that. And without getting graphic, there are a lot of things that I witnessed that through the human consciousness would look very unpleasant or you might be very concerned for your loved one. And he's saying, I was in this other place. And so I thought that that would be a, a good thing to share with people to understand that we have to remember the 3D world is an illusional experience to give us the opportunity to claim love again. No matter what it looks like to us, we can go back and claim love in the midst of it. And that's the power to me of, of what I learned through this was to just claim love again. Uh, yes. Seems like that's the life journey is the return to love. And yes. um, it, it, it sparked another question that I have for you, Richard, which is, does every human that passes on go to the same place and, and have a similar experience? Well, I can't speak for everybody. I've thought about that. And I know that, again, intent has, a, and belief systems have an awful lot to do with things. And understanding symbology sometimes, I can't speak to what somebody's going to experience. I can, uh, when, when they pass. When I, at one point, when towards the end of my husband's stay in the hospital, um, he was still pretty sick and the doctors didn't know for sure what way it would go. Um, if he was going to get better, increasingly heal, or if things were going to deteriorate. And so I remember looking, Richard was asleep and I had had my eyes closed and I opened them. And as I look, I see this semicircle of beings around him. And the very first presence I see is Chief Golden Light standing there doing ceremony over Richard. And right next to him is Chief Blue Star, his brother. And next to him is a very good friend of mine who had crossed each person in a semicircle were healers or spiritual beings who had already crossed and they were all working on Richard and on his energy. And that's when I knew he's, he's going to come through this. And it was the most amazing auspicious thing because it was as clear as day. They're just standing there doing their ceremony um, and it really lifted my spirits and my heart. But that was a very uh, poignant time. Is there anything I'm missing on that semi-circle that I was telling you? No, that's story. when you told me uh, you wouldn't believe how many people are praying. Yeah. But yeah. But um, it was very powerful to open my eyes and see that and know that the other dimensions were aware and were there. and we had the full support and love of all of the beings of light that we knew or have known. Um, it so, was beautiful. So while we're in form, uh, while we're here in form, um, again, we use diff different things that we, um, give ourselves permission to to bow to that to that infinite self within ourselves and 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 within and without the the infinite within the finite and the formless within the form and so i think of what happens i think it has to do, a lot to do with what your beliefs are or or what resonates for you you know i i would tell anybody just 
I, like I've you know I follow my heart and I listen to my head, but I follow my heart, and I'll put the two in the same room, you know. But I want I'll, I'll listen to my head, but follow your heart, and uh, and yeah, you yeah, it's your heart, okay? Because I remember when I thought it was my heart too, but I I can just say that that it is real. It, it can, it can, it's, it's more real what we're taught than anything we could than how we can imagine but it's just that simple and it is just that pure and it's just really comes down to love and uh, you, you know when I look my um, let's see I graduated and I, I'm going to just give a little introductory thing here to try to help that I think might help a little bit and uh, that is that in uh, 1972 is when I graduated from Sonoma State University with emphasis on humanistic psychology, parapsychology, and altered states of consciousness. So I spent a lot of time. Uh, that includes a lot of astral traveling as well. Um, but it's, it's, it's been amazing. And, uh, so uh, some of this surprises me. It's not a world that I haven't injected myself into because it is, it's just, I had no idea. And, I, it was made very clear to me that there are no accidents. Everything in my life led up to that moment, everything, and, and that, Everything is the divine plan. It, it's all a divine plan. The choices I make are, are how, what do I decide to do as I walk on this earth? And I would say that walking on this earth, I've, I've climbed mountains, uh, the, the, the proverbial spiritual, these, uh, my spiritual path, I've had to climb mountains. I've had to, to swim oceans. I've had to cross streams and I've got to walk in valleys and I've got to walk in meadows. You know, our, our path is just, it keeps taking us to this, to another level of understanding and no, there is no right. There is no wrong. Everything is just a step on that path of expanding our conscious awareness of our relationship of who we are with all that is, and um, there's, and then there's just no separation, and that's the that's really what we come to get to, and this is a big big part of what's happening, and where we're going right now. This is a really big part of explaining how. You might be feeling how I might be feeling, how others might be feeling, and to just know that uh, it's it's more real than we can even imagine. It's just amazing, but it really helps the conscious mind understand what's happening, and that there's a major event that's going to take place. Ooh, all right. Well, let's save that for another episode. <laughs> that sounds super exciting. It's all. It's only a 4,320,000 year cycle. <laughs> <laughs> and guess where we're time. at. And guess where we are. Are we close? Okay. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much, Lori, Laura and Richard. I, I you, just enjoyed this time getting to know you and, and hearing these amazing um concepts and ideas and just you know it's it's so great for the for the soul and the you know just the the beauty that you two hold and the love that you shine and thank you so much for sharing a little bit of that with us today so on that note thank you Jim in luck Tesh. all right well, thanks for joining us <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> all right take care